I have here a glass of water. I got it straight out of the tap in the house where we live. The question is, do we really know what's in this glass of water? So I decided to do a little bit of research on the water that is delivered to my property. I live in Painesville, Victoria, Australia, in the heart of the Gippsland Lakes. And I discovered that our water that's in this glass is sourced from the Mitchell River, which is a nearby river which I have kayaked in quite recently. The water from the Mitchell River is then uh, taken to a treatment plant where it undergoes a number of treatments. First of all, the first treatment they do is to disinfect the water with chlorine. The chlorine destroys viruses, bacteria and parasites. Again, all good things. The second thing they do at the treatment plant is that they add fluoride to the water. This is something that our state government has made compulsory over all town drinking water in the whole of our state and has been the case for many years. They have added fluoride to the water. And the reason they give to support this decision is that they tell us that fluoride will help with dental health. So these would seem like two very good options to add chlorine and fluoride to our water. But the question I want to ask today is what else does chlorine and fluoride do to our bodies? Is there any negative side effect to these things being added to our water? Should we be concerned about it? And I know many people today are very concerned about what is in their water and they go to quite a bit of trouble to filter their water. Now I've already briefly describe to you the benefits of those two things in our water but now I want to just turn the tables a little bit and ask uh, is there any downside to chlorine and fluoride in our water? Let me talk first of all about chlorine. As I said the chlorine removes the bacteria and viruses etc from our water but what else does it do? Well there is some studies that have been done that seem to suggest that there is an association between excessive chlorine and cancer. The second concern that some people have, and this you'll be familiar with if you've ever swum in a public swimming pool, that chlorine does have a very unique smell and sometimes quite unpleasant smell. And then of course if you've swallowed a mouthful of water at the swimming pool you'll know that it doesn't taste particularly nice either. Now in our drinking water it would be in much lower levels than a swimming pool but the principles are the same. Some of the dangers with overexposure to chlorine can be breathing problems that uh, might be reflected by asthma and also skin problems like dry skin or eczema on your skin. Excessive chlorine exposure can aggravate skin conditions, particularly I'm thinking of dry skin or eczema. The other issue with chlorine in excess, it can cause breathing difficulties and this is particularly uh, relevant to people who suffer from things like asthma. So that's chlorine. Now I want to discuss fluoride for a moment and particularly talk about some of the pros and cons with fluoride. Fluoride is good for mental health. This is pretty much scientifically proven and it is the reason why some governments like our state government here in Australia uh, make it mandatory to add fluoride to water. It does strengthen the enamel around teeth. It also makes teeth more resistant to acid that is in some forms of food and drink. The main problem here is that when you have fluoride maybe in your toothpaste, this is applied directly to your teeth. But when it's put in your water, you're drinking it. So it's not only being applied to your teeth, you are ingesting it into your whole body. And therefore, you really need to know what the pros and cons of drinking this stuff is. I mean, you wouldn't go to your local pool and drink the water out of the pool, certainly not voluntarily. Now, there's some ongoing scientific studies about the detriment of fluoride in our water and uh, 
no doubt more study has to be done, but some of these studies are suggesting that excessive exposure to fluoride can be associated with thyroid disruption and even reduced IQ in children. Now, if that's proven true, then that's quite a serious statement. I'm not saying those things are decisively proven, but some of the early studies they have done are suggesting those connections. Especially if you have long-term exposure. You see, when it's in your water, you have no choice, and it is long-term exposure because for all of my 70 years, I think the government has been putting fluoride in our drinking water. In any case, I am told that this drinking water straight out of our tap here in Painesville is well within the Australian standards of safe levels of both chlorine and fluoride. So this product, according to our government agencies, is safe. It's safe to drink. But is it optimal? Is it the best water we can have? Well, clearly that's not the case. So what are our choices here? The choice that many people make is to filter their water, even their tap water at home. And you'll see these units in many kitchens today, often a jug type system or a, you know, a built-in under the, under the counter system that filters the water coming out of your tap. There are basically two types of water filter that you can get. The first is the carbon filter, and these are commonly used in what I've just mentioned, the jug filters and the, the, the countertop and undercounter filters. They are carbon filters, and they work by a chemical attraction system that attracts the nasties to it and removes them from the water. A second type of filter is what's known as a reverse osmosis filter. Now this is a much more thorough filter than the carbon filter. The reverse osmosis filter forces the water under pressure through a membrane. A carbon filter will remove chlorine, that disinfectant that we talked about at the beginning of this video. It will also be quite effective at removing the smell of chlorine in the water and the taste of chlorine in the water. However, this is where the similarity ends because a carbon filter will not remove fluoride from the water, no matter what the manufacturers try to tell you. It will not, it cannot remove all fluoride from the water. For that, you, you must have a, re a reverse osmosis filter. The reverse osmosis filter is the only filter that will remove chloride, it will remove heavy metals, and it will remove nitrates from the water. So I have here in front of me a reverse osmosis filter. This filter was sent to me free of charge by the company who makes it, Itty Hell. I don't know how you pronounce that. It's I-T-E-H-I-L. And they sent me this filter to try it out for myself. I'm not being paid for the video, so any comments about the filter are my own, but uh, they did send it to me free of charge, so I wanted to get that uh, out up front and be transparent with that. Now this filter is really designed for a camping situation where you might come across some really dirty creek water and you need drinking water and it will filter any dirty water. In fact I made a video on this on my camping channel where I had some really putrid water taken from a dam and it had bird poo and moss and all sorts of stuff in it and I filtered the water through this filter and I drank it. I will leave a link to that at the end of the video if you want to see that. But for this video today I'm only talking about home use and filtering our tap water that has been our subject today. So inside this filter there are actually two filters built in. There is a carbon filter and there is also a reverse osmosis filter, so we're covered on both counts. The unit itself is operated by a rechargeable battery, so you do not need mains power to operate the system. That is to support the uh, camping scenario where you might be out in the bush and you don't have access to power. You can charge it up on a power point at home and then take it out. How long does it last? Well, a full charge filters about 32 litres of water. 
you can convert that to gallons if uh, you use gallons, but about 32 litres. So the unit here looks a little bit like a toaster. It's got that double slice thing that looks like a toaster, but it's actually a handle that you can carry. The water filters themselves are inside under this cover, and then there are three hoses that come out. This first hose is quite a long hose, and this is designed to put in your water supply that of the water that you're wanting to filter. So I've got over here on the ground a very large tub of uh, water out of our drinking tap here in Painesville, as I said. And then I've got two other hoses. The blue hose coming out this side of the filter is a wastewater hose. So I put that back into the water that I'm filtering. And then the pure water that has been filtered comes out the white hose. And I've got here a stainless steel um, water container that will hold 30 litres of water. And I use this to uh, store our drinking water in. So I put that down on the ground next to the other container there and simply put the hose in there. And then I set this system going at the press of a button and there it's going. It takes a moment or two for the water to start to filter and then the, uh, you have the clean filtered water coming out uh, through, the, through the white hose into the container that you've got for it. So I've got a stainless steel container there. I uh, like the stainless steel. I don't like putting water in plastic as much as I can help it, but that's a subject for another video. So 45 minutes later, the stainless steel container holding 30 litres of Osmo filtered water is now on our kitchen counter ready to drink and to use in our kitchen and all as a result of using the Eddy Hill water filter system. If you're interested in exploring one of these either for camping or for home use or maybe both uh, you can have a look at the uh, link. I'll leave a link down below they are currently on sale with $100 off and then if you use my link you get another 10% off. And you can have a look at that and see whether it's a solution for you. I think they're a great product that uh, is, is very useful and compared to the price of many other osmosis filters, very, very reasonable cost. It's a good solution if you want to filter your own water before you drink it. So look, I will leave a link up here to the uh, previous video I made on my camping channel when I filtered some really foul and disgusting water and uh, actually drank it on that video. The link is up above. But look, thanks for watching today. Please consider joining and becoming a member of this channel. Subscribe, like, all of those things. They do help us immensely. And thank you for watching. I will see you on the next video. But until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and God bless.